teaching and developing online started, I started originally on a free blogging site. And I started it because I thought it would probably be the best way for me to share information with the 27 staff members that I have. So I put together this blog and then when I was surfing the World Wide Web and if I found something that was interesting, a website that I thought was good, or if there was a comment that I needed to share with the whole staff, then what I would do is I'd post it on this teaching and developing online. After uh, doing that for about a month on the free website, uh, University of British Columbia asked, it, asked if they could host it and they're still hosting it, thank you to University of British Columbia. Um, and since that time, it's, it's sort of become this blog that more than just the 27 people here tend to be using it, and it's, it's just continued to grow, and now it's become a daily thing for me to go surf the World Wide Web, find something of interest, put it on the Teaching and Developing Online blog. And so that's the where it originated. Um, some of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find sites that would pertain to teaching online for... Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. biggest disaster in online design was <laughs> uh, trying to expect students to understand idiosyncrasies and expression. Um, I have my own particular pattern. I have my own, like a comedian, I have my own particular pattern uh, in communicating with students. And what I found when I first started putting my course online was that I had to relearn uh, some communication skills that I had taken for granted because um, in the online environment, there's no facial expression. There's no real, I mean, unless you go into audio, there's no real understanding of tone. Um, the communication becomes a little more difficult. So there, there's a huge paradigm to understand that uh, communication needs to be deliberate, it needs to be planned, and it needs to follow certain set rules which are different in online teaching than they are in classroom teaching. I think that was one of my first big challenges. And I, I remember distinctly a few real fall on my face kind of email correspondences and even lessons on online where Thanks for listening to the ADL words as we look at ongoing improvement, new creation, and, and trying to bring new staff in. So when we pick up our new four new developers or whatever it is each year, this is going to become a more valuable resource to get them up to speed and in sharing the knowledge that we've all kind of built. There's this shared bank of knowledge that we all have, and trying to explain that person by person would take forever. Yeah. It's even the point where just the sheer needs of communicating that quickly and in a, in a way that's accessible, this is the way to do it. And really, like these... The things we've talked about even in the first section, they're the digital ways of the future for sharing mass information. Um, it just makes sense to do it this way because there's a collective knowledge that can just be passed on um, and it's not labor intensive and it's not, it's not really laborious. Thanks for listening to the ADL Words.
what we did at cyber school was a little different in that we got content experts in the subject areas uh, not necessarily technology experts and brought them in and then kind of went through this practical hands-on approach and I think it was that but I think there's a, it's a it was a real fine line and that it, some of it seems like trial and error but without this collective you know this community of developers working and drawing from one another's experiences I think it would have been a real struggle I think you, you, we would have run the risk of, of diminished returns it would have been a, a, a ton of effort um, to reinvent the wheel every time. So it, it's the collaboration and that, that's sort of the key. Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. valuable things about the the the, uh, the site is that it does go into specifics about what we do. Um, <clears throat> Darren and I both have started pursuing graduate studies in, in distance education and what you find is that there's just such a there's a very uh, there's such a wide variation in what people are using online distance education technology for it's really hard to find something that applies to me. You know when you're out there looking you, you kind of you, you recognize that, and I think that's one of the things that brings people back, is if they start looking at it and they say, you know, this works for me, uh, what I do, uh, and that's very specific to the, you know, sort of that K-12 online, you know, cyber experience, um, it's a, it is happening in other places in the world, and I think that through this distance, you know, sort of this idea that we can go out there and post this stuff, Darren can access, you know, we have worldwide exposure, um, what really seems like a scattered community can seem that way globally, feel like we're isolated. Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. A method of using WebCT, the data in WebCT, feeding it into FileMaker Pro, even though FileMaker Pro originally was an Apple program, which I'm not too thrilled about. But <laughs> the fact is that Apple, the FileMaker Pro is a great program because it's very flexible and it will allow us to take that feed from the tracking tool within WebCT and build a system where we can send out automatic emails to any student who has not logged on in more than four days or five days or six days. And we're getting very close to finishing that. And the whole goal from an administration point of view from the cyber school is try to save my developers time, my teachers time, so that they can actually do what they're hired to do, and that's to teach the students. Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. Those content experts would not come with the, the technical background. They'd have to learn how to use the technology themselves. Now that's a really key important fact because a lot of university programs, what they tend to do is they have an IT department, which is a whole team of people that tend to take this content expert's material and then create it. That content expert then is left out of that loop and then when there's something that they don't like or something that they need to change in their online course, they have to go back to the IT department, which is sometimes there's a waiting list to get in there and the material doesn't change quickly enough. Where here, because it's, it's developed by the person who teaches it, they can very quickly go back and yeah. fix it.
expert here. There, here's the expert who puts it online, and here's the expert who's expert in the content. Problem with that is they, they so often butt heads. Like the subject area guy says, you know, these are what I want, and this is the subject itself, and the tech person says, no, we can't do that, or or actually goes on. I mean, I've seen instances where the tech, the technology expert goes on and changes content to fit because of technological constraints, and it, it turns into a nightmare because you're losing content and. And the person who's creating it, the person who's in control of the final outcome, isn't necessarily a subject area expert. They're not. All they are is an expert in how to get this online. And you see examples of that where it's just frustrating for the learner. I'm sure it must be frustrating for the for the instructor. Um, and there's just this there's this communication break. Um, it's just not it's not working. The, the material of the course right. isn't getting through. It's not working. And you're. Cyber school right now. We have a resident shockwave, you know, macromedia flash expert. We have a resident sound expert. We have guys and ladies who come in and, and they pick one particular area and that's something that they just excel at. It just really tweaks with them. But the great part is we share it so that there's elements of that with everybody. So it's not just, you know, this guy is the shockwave guy and his entire course is shockwave and no one else really touches it because he goes and he shares that knowledge with everybody. And I think that's the key to both to success we've had so far and to ongoing success going forward and I think that teaching and developing online is a huge part of that because that's where that collaboration comes from where you know when it started out I I would talk to Dan about it. when it first started out it was an interesting email that I got in my email inbox every day and I deleted it um, <laughs> because I was just busy I was really busy I don't know if that's a shock to Darren or if you just forgot you mean I was writing all this stuff and you weren't reading it because I think what we found was we had this we were in the pod so much that I, I wasn't but now more and more as we rely on this communication Thanks for listening to the ADL words Everything that I do and every comment that I make and all the websites that I choose are based on the fact that I spend 14 hours or however many hours I spend a day developing the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. So I used to post all the time as seen through my cyber glasses. And my cyber glasses, I consider that to be my perception of what I think distance learning should be and online learning should be. And because of that, I think you have to be very careful with it. When people talk about distance learning, there's all sorts of things that fall into that. You could have the correspondence course, you could have radio courses, you can have courses that are emailed out, and then you send your answers back on the Friday. Like, there's so many different types of online learning that I think it's really important that everything is set in a context, and people have to understand it. My concept and my perception and my comments are all based on my experience here at the Saskatoon Catholic Cyber School. And so we just take everything that we've done here, and when, when I talk about my experiences, I'm talking about our whole cyber school. Like, everybody is, I consider to be a collective Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. And let's take a step back just to the fact that we are the developers that we have are the same people who teach the courses. So when we have a person who actually teaches a class, he he or she has normally been the person who wrote it, and that that is very important as well when we look at it from from the point of view that we hire the content expert, we teach them 
or we try to teach them what they need to know about computers in order to put the course online. So they bring all the skills that they had in the classroom onto the online environment. That brings good and bad things because some, some things are totally different online than they are in a face-to-face -face classroom. And if you're the type of person who's a sage on the stage, the online environment's gonna drive you crazy because you need to get off the stage and sort of direct and be, become more of a facilitator. And so we found those characteristics in teachers. It's, we're getting better at identifying who's gonna be a real good online teacher. And they're, they're also very good on uh, classroom teachers as well. And because they come with very little expertise and very little, you know, this is where it has to be done for it to be successful. The Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. the drive that the students have to have online courses. They're the ones who push us to put more courses on all the time and to change the things and just they're, they're so gung-ho about the whole concept and the whole design behind it that if they weren't as, as behind it as they were, the cyber school wouldn't have grown as quickly as it did because uh, the, the obviously teachers, we like to do things very step-by-step -steps, procedures and, and work through things, make sure it all works fine beforehand. And the, te the students are pushing so fast to get this material on because they're so comfortable with it. The computer to them is like a toaster. Thanks for listening to the ADL Words. One night I was just surfing around the World Wide Web and I had typed in my name, which I tend to do periodically because it just comes up with some real weird hit sometimes. And I found there's a few other guys with my name out there in the, in the world. So I was surfing around and I found Darren Cadell written down in Chinese. Now, being the linguist that I am, I can't speak Chinese. So what I thought is, okay, I'll post this on my blog and hopefully some Chinese student or someone who speaks Chinese will be able to translate it for me. This was about 11 o'clock at night. So I posted it on, the, on my blog. Within 15 minutes, I had a translation from someone in Taiwan. And about 25 minutes after that, I had a translation from somebody in China. And my hit counter on the World Wide Web was telling me, on my, on my site, sorry, was telling me that I was getting about 15 to 20 or to 40 on a good day hits a day. And uh, that didn't make any sense to me because the chances of you hitting two people in within an hour who speak Chinese out of those 40 people is pretty slim. <laughs> so I thought either my hit counter is all screwed up or there's more people going in my Thanks for listening to the ADL Words.